Hey guys, Bryce with Trick Tools here. And uh, today we're gonna be working with the Ice Engine Works FE series of modeling blocks. And we have Victor here with us, who's gonna help us uh, and explain to us uh, how these kits work and uh, how we can get the most out of them when you're trying to build exhaust. So uh, Victor, you wanna talk about the kits and uh, what all they include? Thank you, Bryce. Yeah, today we want to showcase the, uh, out of the FE series for full exhaust, the uh, 2500 series, which is for two and a half inch OD uh, tubing. We uh, developed these to help uh, fabricators uh, in the design and fabrication of um, cat packs, cool exhaust. Uh, it can also be used, you know, with aluminum to create color, you know, coal pipes for turbos, you know, from compressor to intercooler, and even color intakes for um, for smaller uh, displacement engines. And the system is again, it's just following our, our philosophy of blocks that you know, just uh, we just click with each other and just create. Uh, uh, simple or complex uh, tubular assemblies. In the case of the FEs, um, what we chose is to develop blocks that are always 15 degrees in angle uh, uh, so that you can create uh, simple multiples, so 15s, you know, 45s, 30s, 75s, whatever. And we also added um, a new concept, which is a long straight block to cover distances quickly, which are very common in, in exhaust systems, mm -hmm. you know, connecting calorie converters to mufflers to resonators quickly. And there's also a trimmer, one inch long. And, and then we have, we include four different uh, centerline radius, uh, again, all of them 15 degrees. In the case of the 2500 series, we have a three, a three and a half, a four and a five inch CLRs. So with all that, it's again, it's just a matter of connecting points uh, A to B. Uh, we recommend that um, uh, the user has already uh, set the, uh, the end points of, uh, of their system, you know, the dump pipe, the end of the dump pipe, the end of the, uh, uh, exhaust um, connection all the way to the next section and then after that just connecting the, the blocks so we're gonna go through the entire system uh, again three stages is really how we work our stuff stage one will be the signing with the blocks uh, taking notes of how the metal sections need to be cut and then we'll move on to section stage two which is the cutting and then finally stage three which is assembly and welding so all right, sounds let's good. get started so we're going to be using the FE series bodily blocks to uh, build up the exhaust system here on this chassis. So uh, we've got the downpipe already in place uh, that splits out into uh, two and a half inches. And then we also have the start of an X pipe here at the mufflers that we'll be joining into uh, on the other end. So uh, we'll use the modeling blocks to show you guys how to get uh, both ends out of the downpipe and then how to join them together uh, at the X pipe here. So. Uh, we'll start building and uh, show you guys the process on that. So in about 10 minutes time, uh, we have the exhaust pipes uh, mocked up here with the modeling blocks. So uh, at this point, we're gonna proceed by um, getting the connections into the exhaust, uh, the X-pipe here uh, started. So um, we'll take the blocks apart and uh, we'll put them on the cutting jig and throw the material in the bandsaw and uh, get to building here. So um, yeah, we'll get the cutting. <laughs> All right, so we took this section off of the back of our uh, modeled pipes and uh, finished up the X-pipe here. So now we're gonna take the complete pipe sections 
off here and Victor's going to show us how to transfer that onto the control sheet so we can calculate what kind of material we need. So, uh, Victor, you want to yeah. explain that process? So, in the case of building full exhaust, obviously we have much more room than typically, typically we would have on, a, on an exhaust system, on an, a header or a thorough manifold. So, we have the, bit, the freedom to actually take the entire assembly out. So, which one you want to you wanna start with? A sure, yeah, we'll start with the other side here. So, should come out here relatively easy. And essentially what we will do is uh, just go block by block uh, until we can determine what is the most efficient way to reproduce this in metal. Uh, we talked about, uh, I mean, this is an important moment where you, you can actually make a decision of, uh, on the appearance of the, the, the system as far as where to locate the, uh, the wells. Mm -hmm. uh, we talked about um, using this long section, which you already have a, 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 you know, three, three footers yep. uh, to use that. And then to avoid, this is purely aesthetical, to avoid having a double double well here, probably, we'll, as we talked about, probably placing the well in between or... Um, yeah, we'll, or we'll, we'll go we'll to right we'll here, there, maybe put the well right here. Okay. And then... Uh, so this is all one section? Correct, yeah. And we'll have another section all the way to here. Yep. And then on this one, uh, we'll have an, yet the, it'll be the third section, but we are slightly short, so we'll have to add uh, a little bit of more um, material that we'll have to trim but mm -hmm. really that that'll be the only thing really to call it out of out of accuracy other than that it's it just sits right on yep so let's just move on and put this on on perspective with our um, control uh, sheet control sheet all right so this is also pretty straightforward in the case of the uh, fe series our control sheets are, are really blank i mean you just got to fill in the the blanks as far as what the CLR is, and this is simply just to make it easy for everybody. So don't forget to put what the CLR is um, so that you don't get confused at the end. Mm -hmm. So very quickly, we know that each one of the, 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 the blocks are 15 degrees, so we have one, two, three here, 45 degrees at three inch center line radius, and we have one, two, three, and four uh, one inch uh, blocks. So again, uh, making sure, first of all, we specify what the CLR is, it's a three inch, Oh, and again, we're taking three of these. So we start one, two, and three, so all the way to here. And then we have four inches. One, two, three, four, so all the way to here. So this is our first part. All this, uh, now we're starting from the back, right? So this is gonna flow. Correct, it's gonna flow. The this opposite way. Yeah. Yes. This. Uh, no, 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 the other way around. Yeah, the other way around. Yep. Okay. Why well, should, should, should we call it just passenger? Yeah. Uh, passenger section, what? One, two, three. Yep. P3. Uh, so that's, that's down. Then yep. we need this one. These are five inches long, each one of them. One, two, three, four. four. So that's 20 inches. We got this special section for straights, um, in one inch and five inch increments. So the dotted lines are the single ones, the solid lines are the fibers. So we have one, two, three, and four. So all the way to here, that's our second section, which would be passenger side number two. And again, we just color it, mark it somehow so you don't get to use it again, because this is already taken. And then finally, the last section, it's, uh, so far we got a 15 degree, but because, as I said, we're a little off, uh, we need to trim it. Uh, so we're gonna give it a little bit more, what do you think, like half of another block or? I'm thinking or about more? 10 more degrees or so. 10 what more it, degrees, so two thirds. Um, so on this, you know, obviously, because it's somewhere in between, we'll have to make a special note, plus 10 degrees. And then we have two straights. So it's one and two. So we're doing this, uh, this is the final one. And that's uh, again, uh, part uh, passenger number one, and it's going to flow from the turn into the straight. So again, the whole point of the control sheet is to be able to know exactly what we need to, to uh, acquire for, uh, to reproduce this in, in metal. Uh, so we got the material, we have one U bend, and we have a, we're gonna have a leftover, and we have a chunk of 20 inches uh, for straight. And then we can determine that each one of these requires a cut. So we have two cuts per part. 
we have three parts, so we have six cuts, and then we're gonna have one weld, two welds, three welds, and four welds. So again, the whole point of the control sheet is to be able to determine exactly what will it take to build this thing, and if it still makes sense after we have come up to these final numbers, then we can pull the trigger and we know we'll be safe. This is what saves a lot of time, a lot of material, you know, avoiding uh, useless scrap, and uh, you can knock this out in a matter of minutes, literally. Yep. So Sounds let's good. move on to the cutting stage. Yep. All right, so we got the parts uh, cut here to match the modeling blocks that we had mocked up. So um, we have a couple of these tack weld clamps in place, uh, ready to help us get it fit into the chassis. So uh, Victor, if you'd give us a little explanation on how the tack weld clamps work and a, yes. a demonstration as well. So uh, the, the whole idea on the clamps is, is, is uh, to be able to hold more than two sections that we can hold on each hand uh, and ideally prepare the entire uh, assembly in one piece so you can present it and then just make the tweak, uh, the little minute uh, changes to adjust angles and rotation. That's really the benefit of these things. And then uh, the fact that you can come in and tack them, you know, without having to burn your fingers. So in this case, um, Bryson has already completed all the parts, so the only one we're missing is this, uh, adding it. But I would like to show, uh, you know, that uh, the clamps not only uh, can cover straight to straight, which is the easy way, but also do uh, bend to bend. And that's where really their, their, their true power uh, becomes uh, um, valuable for the user. So uh, again, the clamp has uh, two different uh, rings. One is called, the, uh, well, we call it the, 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 the pivoting ring, which is, is the one uh, that has the, um, the fixed end of the adjustable link. And that's the one that gives us the angle. And then the other one is the one that's gonna give us the arc, depending on what the position of this one. So a general rule of thumb is to find the, the highest point of the, each of the tubes. And that's w and when they're aligned, that's, that's not a problem. When they're in different angles or planes, that's when we need to find those uh, top points. And ideally, we place the uh, adjustable link in between them. And that's what allows us to close the, um, the possible gaps that they can uh, develop. Because what we want is uh, concentric uh, joints that are also gapless, so that in, in theory you could just simply do, uh, do a, a quick uh, fusion. So it's very simple. Again, this can be worked actually in the car when you have to tweak just the end where it points, and where it uh, when when you are finally done, it's just simply uh, you know tighten. Um, rotation is really simple. You can just loosen them up a little bit, so you can actually do all these minor uh, changes. In the past, without the clamps, you might remember the days when we had to witness line it, mm -hmm. and if it didn't work, and you didn't find out it didn't work until the end, you had to come back and break it and clean up again and do it again. This way, we can, I mean, you can even use witness lines if you want, but the fact that I can do very little changes and then just test it until the ends are uh, matching, mm -hmm. then I can just commit to it and, um, and then go for the weld. So, right. again, this is just an example. We're gonna use the, uh, this is actually the working part that you can just put in there. Yep. So yeah, we can start to mock this up in the car, I guess. Yep. We'll just tighten up a little bit to give it a little bit of friction. That should run okay. too far. So let's just present it in the car and see how it works. Sounds good. All right, well, we've got the right side finished up. We got it tacked in place, and uh, now we're gonna keep working on the other side. But for now, we've been able to show you how the 
um, modeling blocks work and how easy it is to build a mock-up and exhaust system to be able to clear your components and go from the modeling blocks into the actual part. So, uh, Victor, you have any closing thoughts? No, I just want to ask you in general, what's your uh, feelings or experience on, on doing this? You're switching from the, uh, we did NP the other day, we did EH series, and now this should be a lot simpler. But I was just really amazed how quickly this thing went, uh, you know, you went through the whole thing and very relaxed. You know, we were just cracking jokes, start telling stories, yeah. and that's what we want. We want our, 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 our clients to be enjoying their time building these things so without yeah. becoming anxious. Yeah, so for sure. Yeah, it definitely, uh, it definitely takes uh, you know, some of the guesswork out of it where you're uh, in depth and thought trying to make sure that you're um, not going to be wasting material cutting it apart. To be able to mock it all up, know what you're going to be building before you actually build it um, is definitely a, a unique part about the, uh, the modeling system. So. Excellent. Um, yeah. All right. All right. Well, if you're interested in the uh, exhaust modeling system uh, from Ice Engine Works, visit our website at tricktools.com. If you have any further questions, uh, give us a call and we can help you get that figured out. So uh, for now, subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos on high performance tools for the fabricator. Mm -hmm.